Right, in today's video, I'm gonna be taking one of these guys and cutting it open and I'm gonna show you what's inside and what the restriction is. And what we're also gonna be doing is welding it back together so that there's a cap with no restrictions in it. So you can have it on the bike and it'll look like you've still got a cap on it. And you won't have to spend $400 on two bits of welding bend <laughs> welded together. Right, I've been a bit quiet with the Bobber vlog lately because I've had other stuff going on in my life which has taken priority. Also, I've come to a little bit of a standstill because I don't have a budget for the Bobber vlog at the moment. I made a big investment with the supercharger and that's sort of blown my budget out a little bit, but it was well worth it and I've produced lots of great content from it and it's an ongoing thing which I'm really pleased I've invested in, even though it was a big load of money to fork out. So the Bobber vlog is still going, I am still progressing with it, all the things I said I'm going to do, I'm still going to do, but I'm also going to do them a lot better. That's why I'm working on other stuff at the moment as well. I've actually been sent this MIG welder by Art Captain to review, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be reviewing that. The only trouble is I'm having a little bit of trouble with, with no budget with a Bobber vlog. I don't have materials because I wanted to make some headers for it, but I, I don't have the money to buy the materials for the headers and stuff like that. So, in true Bobber vlog fashion of not chucking money at stuff, apart from an expensive supercharger, we're going to do things cheap. And, what I'm going to, and also, I need to do some stuff, some welding to actually do a review of this welder. And rather than just welding little bits of metal together, like plates and stuff like that, what everybody does, there's lots of videos about that on the internet, you can go and watch them. We're going to do something useful and informative and a little bit out of the box, like I always do. Along the lines of not having any money to spend, what we're going to do is we're going to modify some already existing stuff. So over here, look, that is a Bobber catalytic converter. I've actually got two of these because I've got one I took off of my Thruxton as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how easy it is to actually get the guts out of that and take all the restriction out of it and show you how to do that, which doesn't cost bugger all especially if you've got a welder or know someone who welds. Because I have two catalytic converters and two silencers, what I might do is I'll modify the cat and one of the silencers and I'll compare the two. I'll compare the standard cat and the modified cat and the standard silencer and modified silencer. And to do this, I may even make a flow bench or some sort of device which will actually measure the flow through it. I'm not sure how to do that yet, but I should be able to rig something up. And it might not be the accurate or the proper way of doing it, but at least you'll be able to see some sort of difference. So that there is the catalytic converter. I've often looked at this and thought about actually cutting them open and seeing how to do it. And I thought about grinding these seams off and taking the top off. But actually looking inside it now, it looks as though the actual guts of it are there and just go to there. So I figured if I just cut the whole thing in half around that weld there, and then afterwards I can actually grind that weld down and weld it back up and it, it won't look much different. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna chop it in half here. Right, today I've got with me one Triumph catalytic converter, some old scrap metal I've got, which I've sort of cut to shape, and an Art Captain MiG 200. See, I've been sent this by Art Captain to do a review on, tell you guys what it's like. So what we're going to do is we are <laughs> going to modify this catalytic converter and weld bits and pieces of metal together. Right, so the reason I've got this lot here is because I'm going to cut this catalytic converter open and I may even weld it back together again without the guts inside it. So to do that, I'm going to make a little jig to hold everything in the same place so it all goes back together. Because I thought it would be interesting to see what's actually inside, what the restriction is, and whether you can actually, well, I know you can get it apart, but how, what sort of a job it is to actually take it apart, take the innards out, and then put it back together. 
because that way you can have that on your bike with no restriction in it and it'll look like it's got a catalytic converter on it and it will sound different too so i haven't played around with this mig much yet so now's my opportunity to do it but you can choose between mig uh stick welding arc welding tig welding i don't actually have a tig welding torch for it or mig with a spool and i don't have a spool for it so we're using mig you can also use it as a gasless welder as well i haven't really got the hang of this yeah, I really need to play about with it before I do a proper review of it, but that's what I'm going to weld all these bits and pieces up for so I can actually get the hang of it and see what's going on. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. If you have a look there, look. I'm hoping there's just two spot welds that hold that bit in there. So we'll, we'll drill them out and see what happens. I've actually just managed to hammer that bit down, so I assume I can lever it up again as well. It's moving in there. Oh, that's got to be out now, surely. Hey, here you go. So I haven't played around with this MIG much yet. So now is my opportunity to do it. But you can choose between MIG, uh, stick welding, arc welding, TIG welding. I don't actually have a TIG welding torch for it or MIG with a spool and I don't have a spool for it so we're using MIG you can also use it as a gasless welder as well and you can actually select your different gas types there by pressing that that there that is your two touch or your four touch or your spot welding function that's how you change your gas to different mixes and this button here is a sync button which will sync your amps and your voltage together. 
Well, that's normal. That's where you can individually change your voltage and your amps. And this here is, I believe, is your impedance, which adjusts the sort of spread of your, your weld paddle a little bit. Right, now next thing, that diffuser or whatever that is in there, do we leave that or take it out? <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's welded in there and it looks like a real nightmare to get out. You'd probably have to actually take all the seams apart and stuff if it's welded at the back or just grind away at it from the front. So I'm not going to go through that amount of trouble. I'm going to leave that in there and then hopefully when we do the comparison with the with the standard cat we'll see what difference it makes and just even with leaving this in there I'd actually like to leave this in there as well because both them pipes point at each other from different cylinders so the back pressure from the other cylinder might actually restrict the flow a little bit so I think that thing might even help and I really don't feel like trying to cut all that out I actually cocked up a bit and I didn't quite get this jig in the right place so I've had to widen this section so what I'm going to do to try this welder out is try and fill that gap up. Gloves, very important. And long sleeves. not bad my welding's bad but <laughs> that worked pretty good I'm quite pleased with me little jig it didn't take any time at all to knock up and I can actually spin that round there to tack the back like that so Pretty much now it's tacked, I'm going to actually put a couple of... Well, actually, I could leave it in the jig to actually finish welding it, to be honest. I might do that. The reason I made this little jig for it is because once you've cut it open with the grinder, you've got the thickness of the grinding disc and my uneven unsteadiness. So it's not going to actually... You can't just butt it back up together. As you can see, there's quite a big gap around here. So with the jig that keeps all these pipes in the right place so they go back on the bike nicely hopefully
So there you go. My welding's not that pretty because <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing very well anymore. But the welder itself, that's burnt in there really nicely. I reckon it would have been quite neat if I just wouldn't have stopped and gone all the way around. But I didn't want to get it too hot in one area. Right, so that's that then. This bit of the cat I took out actually weighs 500 grams. I know someone will be wanting to know how heavy that is. So that's how heavy that is. I'm really pleased we are Captain MiG 200. That did a great job. I highly recommend that. And it's not an expensive welder. But I'll be doing a full review on this very shortly. I'll also be taking the exhausts apart and getting the guts out of them, showing you what's inside them. And we're going to be making them noisier and flow better. And I'm probably going to make it so that you can put the baffles and stuff back in them again as well. So I need to get, once I've done that, I can get the cat and all that back on the bike and you can find out what it sounds like. And we're going to try and make some way of testing the flow through the cat as well. So this has done a great job because I'm not a good welder. I Self-taught, I learned in the days before the internet when you couldn't get on YouTube and actually learn how to do it. So everything I've done is self-taught. And I've been using a gasless MIG here at home as well, which has been pretty hard work. So this is a big improvement. And we're also going to get back to the drag strip at some point. And I'll probably do it with that standard exhaust with the guts taken out of it. Let you know how that gets on as well. So make sure you stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like this video. Stay healthy, drink plenty of water and have a great day. Oh, and the bike will be three years old in a couple of weeks. So we're going to have to do a three year review and let you know what's happened in the last three years and how I've got on with it. <laughs> but if you follow me from the start, you'll know that anyway.